Welcome back everyone to the BD1P random character streak. Today is going to be a random tainted run. It's my first run since Christmas and the holiday season had passed, so I might be a, a little bit rusty, but question of the day today is a bit of a special one. Have you ever seen a shirt as cool as this one? That's right. My, my Christmas gift this year was a, for my girlfriend was a, sh a shirt with her face on it. So I thought I'd show it off today and then show you guys how amazing my, my Christmas was. But without further ado, let's uh, jump into it here. I'm a bit out of, out of focus right now. I haven't recorded anything for maybe three days. And, oh, tainted Lazarus, huh? Uh, well, it happened. Seed is going to be a 128MDV4J. But yeah, this is my longest I've gone without recording since I started this channel. Um, it, it's kind of a weird, like, like, switch, just because I'm used to every single day waking up, sitting down, recording an Isaac episode, recording some Archvale, some inscription, editing, stuff like that, but I'll be honest, I haven't done, like, we, do we really want the ball and chain? I mean, no, because the, the, the library will be way better for us, for, for our flip charge at least, but I, I have this routine in my life that was disrupted by the holiday season. And while I liked not having to work for a while, it was definitely a bit of a change of pace. We do get double bookworm here, by the way, off the bat. I am going to probably take Book of Shadows and then we'll flip with this and we'll touch Book of Sin. We'll pop it, obviously. We'll touch the Satan Bible. Uh, probably not pop it. We'll touch this. I'm gonna run with the Satanic Bible, I think. This floor, not necessarily because our HP is unknown to us, but I think in the future it'll be it'll be a good investment return. But anyways, yeah, it was just weird to have that kind of like routine changed up, but I, I'm ready to get back in the saddle. I did shave as well, if you guys are noticing how amazing I look today. Thank you very much. But yeah, no, I, I had a great Christmas. Um, I got a lot of cool things. I got a lot of nice things, and it was just overall nice to have uh, some time just to unwind and, and not be focusing on recording and, and editing and all that stuff for... The short while, it, it was definitely a welcome change, but I'm glad to be back. Uh, I did not upload any second, like, 2 p.m. slot videos for the past three or four days because I just didn't want to have to, you know, record while I had people over because it feels kind of rude and also not what I really want to be doing with my time right now, but I hope you guys understand that Archville will be back soon. I don't really plan to play Inscription again until they kind of fix the Casey's mod beta. There's not a, a huge issue. It's, it's still really fun to play, but... Because it's a roguelike and you can lose by into like two turns of, of any kind of match, it's not great in the video format right now just because, I mean, I, I've had runs where I've had like the most insane starts, insane follow-throughs, but you just get that one bad wave at the wrong time and your entire run is done after, you know, half an hour of straight progress. So I don't really want to be putting out videos of just me losing over and over. I'll, to put some like perspective into it, uh, I played about 20 runs of it yesterday. And I only won one of those runs. I played about four or five today. Only won one of those as well. That was a dumb hit. Uh, it, it has not been a, a very um, pleasant experience trying to win that game with, with the new beta out. But I'm sure they'll balance it out eventually. And when it is, when it does get balanced out, I will be coming back to it. It's just in the current state, you know, pulling a really bad hand and just losing because you have nothing to play in the first turn. And then losing your entire run because of that one thing. It's, it's not the best thing in the world. So it'll be back eventually, but... Don't expect that anytime soon. I do want to focus on some different styled content, so we're going to put the gaming stuff on hold. Isaac obviously will be here every single day, for those of you wondering, but just different kinds of, uh, of marketed things. But I had, I had another question for chat today. I had another question for you guys, because it, it's a thing that I think everybody in the world, especially in the U.S., I think can relate to to a certain extent. But when, you, when an order, like when you're at a restaurant and you know a waiter brings out, your food, and the food is, is not what you thought it was going to be, or it's messed up, or it's wrong. How do you react to that? Because I'm the kind of guy who will just eat the wrong food, because I hate I hate conflict. I'll just, like, even if, unless it's, like, you know, an entirely, like, different dish, I'm just going to eat the wrong food. Just because, I, I don't know, like, I'm still getting food, and I don't want to, you know, make it, you know, make it something I'm blaming the waiters or blaming the cooks, because I'm sure it's a hard business to be in. That is, you know, the whole... The whole food industry, I used to work there myself and it was not pleasant, but I, I don't like causing conflict for those kind of people and I feel like it, it's kind of like a, a dumb take to be like, well, I don't want to tell them that my food is wrong because I don't want to make them upset, but I genuinely think that like, it's not that big of a deal. If As long as the order is like, edible for me, I, does it really matter? Does it really matter at all? Sun card, magician, what was this fool? 
Uh, we'll, we'll go Sun card for now. We'll go Sun card for now. But I, I just I just genuinely do not see a, a point in bothering somebody over the wrong order unless you can't eat it and you spend money on it. Then I can see like being, hey, waiter, like, you know, I didn't order this, so this is undercooked or like, you know, this chicken is raw. I can't, I, I can, I can see it then, but there have been times where I've gone out to like some, some just chain like Chili's or, or you know, Applebee's or some shit like that. And they've given me like, you know, I asked for a hamburger and I get like a cheeseburger. Oh, big fucking deal. Like I'm going to eat it either way. It's not, it's not, you know, the end of the world for somebody like me, but, but I mean, the thing is too, is you're also paying for a service that isn't getting delivered to you properly. And whether they can knock that off your bill slightly or they can get you your actual food. I mean, that's a, you're not in the wrong for asking for your, your correct order. You're, you're entitled to that, but I just don't like inviting that kind of conflict into my life. And I don't want to make the waiters feel like they're stupid or something like that because I used to be a, a busboy at an Italian restaurant that my, my, ooh, helpy, my, my neighbors owned and they were not the nicest people. Uh, it is a restaurant. I'm not going to say what it's called. It, it's, it's a standalone place and it would kind of, you know, dox my parents and where they live right now. But uh, it was a, a decently expensive Italian place that did not serve the most quality food. Okay, this is going to be an easy choice. Uh, well, I don't really want blood rights or hot bombs, so I will do this. Ooh, rainbow and rune bag, dude. Holy shit, actually so pog. But uh, I used to work there. And I was a busboy for about, like, four months at this place. And being a busboy usually entails, you know, you just clean up dishes or you'll, you'll uh, you know, refill water and stuff like that. At this place, if you were a busboy, you were, like, every single job rolled into one and plus more. Uh, I had to feed, I had to, like, you know, serve food. I took orders occasionally. I would fill up water, you know, clean up dishes, the obvious stuff. I would wash dishes. I would dry dishes. I would go fetch ice from outside. I, I, you were like an everything person there, right? And I was about 14 or 13 when I started working there, one of those two. And dude, honest to God, like it was, I would never recommend the restaurant industry to anybody who wants to get like a high school job. It's not worth the stress. It's just not worth the stress. I mean, sure, you can find good places. There's, there's obviously good places you can work at as a, as a, you know, 14 year old in America at like a food place. You can find like a nice, you know, family-owned diner and just start doing stuff there. But more often than not, it's it's a very demanding job. Uh, physically, weirdly enough, like I, I had um, nights I'd be working there until like 2 a.m. and then I get get up at you know do it again at 2 p.m. the next day. It was it was it was a lot. And because we were like you know kids, we weren't aware of our like you know worker laws. We didn't know like what was right and what was wrong. What, what we couldn't be told to do, what we could be told to do, stuff like that. This is actually. A good situation where we do really want to get BFF. However, I think the devil deal, because we can get two items for free in there. I think the devil deal is going to be more important for us. We, I might be wrong there. We can always save our charge and go back for BFF. It's not going to like, you know, disappear forever. We can watch him pop out here. Just do some, do some light dodging. Get him in there. Perfect. Is it tail time? It's not. I'm going to just, you know, just, just wait it out. Just wait it out. I'm not going to bomb him twice. It'd be kind of a waste, but I do want to get one bomb in there. Okay, he's slow. He's actually... Okay, now you want to just dodge. I'm going to be popping my book here uh, in this next phase pretty soon. I just don't want to get tapped by his tail right now. Okay, pop this and just, just go ham. Just go ham. Get as close as you can. Kill the leeches, everything like that. Hey, he's down on the hole again. There you are, buddy. There you are. Come here. Oh, he's on fire. He's dead. Ooh, we're fine. Uh, meat is really good for this character right now. I'll take the soul heart as well for him. Ah, it's trash, though. Like, it's garbage. <laughs> Azazel's horn is not terrible. It's actually decently good. Um, why don't we just go Angel and just get BFF instead? We could have gone for BFF little Abaddon there. True. Probably was the right play. But I'm just going to go in here. I'm going to flip. I'll buy this. Sure. Um, and then we'll just leave. It wasn't a very good floor for us. We got Rune Bag. We got Play-Doh. But both are kind of like, eh, in the grand scheme of things on this run. We'll just move on down here. But I used to work. I, I worked there for four months. And I got. I, I kind of got fired. I kind of quit. Uh, they didn't have a schedule there either. They, they didn't have a schedule you'd, you'd follow. They would call you. The, well, they, okay, there was a schedule, but you couldn't really follow it. People would call off whenever they felt like it or like, you know, they would fire somebody randomly and just come in and cover for them. So 
essentially it was like an on-call basis. You get called, and be like, hey, do you want to come in today? And you'd be like, no, that they'd fire you. <laughs> so it was more of a, a request, not a, not a question. But I was at my my high school, my my freshman year orientation for high school, and uh, the owner, who was my neighbor again, called me, and my neighbor said, like, hey, can you come in today? And I said, no, I'm at orientation. And she was like, well, we kind of need somebody here because, you know, X person just quit. And I'm like, well, I'm sorry, but like, I'm, I'm you know, I'm like, technically, I'm, I'm like 10 minutes away. I'm in the middle of orientation. I'm getting my, I'm meeting my teachers and shit like that. I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not available. And their response was, you're not ready to have a real job. Turn in your apron. So I, so I was like, okay, that was fucking weird. Because first I'm 14, like... Are you, if you're relying on 14 year olds to do all of your labor at your job, you're, you're messing something up along like the, the, the line there. It's not on the, the, the kids to do your job properly when, when your workers are quitting and dropping like flies. Uh, so I just said, you know what? I'm going to keep this goddamn apron. Well, I didn't say it to them. I'm not, I'm not that much of, a, <laughs> of an alpha, but I kept the apron. It's still under my dresser at my parents' house, I think. And they were my neighbors, so... I never saw them again. They, they avoided me like the freaking flag for a while. Uh, I did go back there and eat a few times to see my friends who still work there. They did not recognize me though because uh, I, I high school is a period where you grow up pretty fast and like you look like every year of my high school career I had a different haircut so I, I was like a different person every year so I wasn't very recognizable but I did go back and eat a couple of times there and just kind of hang out and uh, it, it, it's still open you know they're still open. Ooh. We probably can't afford a restock. We could have probably. We probably still could afford a restock, actually. Can we? Well, yeah, we can afford it. We should have probably, you know, bought this first. But I digress. We got restocked, though. It's nice. Not not too bad. Not too bad. Um, But yeah, I, I, I quit there, and uh, I, I went back and ate a few times. It's very overpriced food. And I'm not just saying because I'm salty that, you know, they fired me or whatever. Like, you know, how many, like, what, five years ago? But... It, it is genuinely not worth the price of their food. Uh, the people who own it, like, the, the owners are Italian, but they were, like, born here in America, but are Italian by blood is kind of, like, their reasoning. We're safe, we're safe, we're safe. So that, they're not, like, true Italians. They don't really know how to cook <laughs> either. Like, their idea of owning a business is just, like, walking around, sitting by the guests of the restaurant, and then, like, that's it. That's their entire job. Uh, which is fine. You own the place. You can do whatever the hell you want with it. I have no issue with that, but... At least the husband of, of the wife who owns it, like, would go and cook with us and stuff. Or, like, not cook, but he would um, cook pizzas and, and he'd help us back there. He'd help us bust and stuff. Like, he was a, a part of the business, it felt like. Richie was a great guy. But uh, the wife, Kathy, she was a loose cannon, man. And they would fight constantly there. Like, it, it was argument, argument, argument. I mean, there was a time where I remember he, middle of service, just said, I'm done, walked out. I didn't see the guy for, like, a week. <laughs> Ooh. Let, let's make some plays here shall we uh do you want little dumpy no it wasn't visible okay i couldn't see it leave me alone so we have cursed eye and i did say you know i'll say it again if i take cursed eye you can shoot me in the head if you see me in person but that was a blind cursed eye i couldn't see it literally not my fault leave me alone do I want to have Cursed Eye? <laughs> Not this early on, dude. It's kind of like a detriment, I feel like. We are going to get a Devil item from our boss, which will be very, hopefully, helpful this floor. And the Satan Bible on Laz 2 is, is making making dreams work right now. But, oh man, I am I am in a very awkward place right now. Well, let's pop this. Let's just get in here. I mean, every tier is a different color, at least. So it, it is, like, really nice burst damage. He is hugging me hard. You see how hard he's hugging me right there? Holy. Oh, bo I guess Bookworm Cursed Eye is not bad. It actually is quite good. Burn. Oh, we're stuck. Oh, we're getting hit here for sure. Yep, I, I couldn't do anything about that. We don't have the DPS to kill this guy right now. Ah, Brimmy Bombs. You know what? I'll... No, it's not worth. It's not worth. I this this run is, is killing me right now. Uh, let's just leave the floor and go on down. We're not in... Laz 2 is a great character. Laz 1 right now is... He needs something to boost him up right now, but... Going back to that restaurant tangent there, um, like there were times where Richie, the husband, would just storm out of the restaurant and not come back for like a week. There were times where Kathy would just straight up fire somebody because she was angry at her husband. The daughter who helped, who I guess, I think she actually owns the place now. 
uh, she would just drink like wine in the back all shift. They get super drunk, and <laughs> that that was kind of her job. I feel like um, she was fun to be around. She was very nice uh, whenever she wasn't drunk, but the place just wasn't being ran well. And it, it was so bad. I'm not even. I'm being completely honest with you right now, chat. It got so bad that they applied to be on um, Kitchen Nightmares, a uh, Gordon Ramsay show. He didn't accept because I'm guessing it wasn't like in that dire need of a, of a fixing, but. It, it did get to a point where they thought as owners that they're going to need Gordon Ramsay's help. I get this. I'm getting hit here. No, I cannot. We got a health. Okay, you know what? Honestly, I will sacrifice my angel chance for a health upgrade and a blue heart right now. Actually, that was so fine, I feel like. And we can maybe still get a deal. You never know. That is for the other guy. That is for the other man. The problem is, though, is if we start taking devil deals with our satanic Bible... It will give us precedence. We'll no longer see any angel deals, which kind of blows. Kind of blows. But I, I think the, the utmost worst experience there that I ever had, uh, aside from when they fired me for being at a high school orientation, um, is there was one... Saturdays are the busiest days for restaurants, especially, like, you know, d dinner restaurants. And this is what this place was. It, it was an Italian dinner place. And occasionally, uh, they would have, like, musical guests there, like, you know, trumpets or, like, j just kind of like your Frank Sinatra knockoff people. That was kind of what they had going on there for a while. And um, there was one night, it was a Saturday, where scheduled to work was me, my friend Parker, and that was it. We were the only two bussers there, and she also, on top of that, the owner only scheduled two servers for the busiest night with a musical guest on a Saturday. And I worked that shift, I think it was like, it was like 11 and a half hours um, total that day, because the guy who was playing the trumpet decided that after he was done with his whole spiel, wanted to stay and eat. Because he, he was playing until like 11 p.m. Then he stayed and ate, which is fine. You're, you're allowed to eat. No shit. But after he got done eating, this is where it gets like really weird. The owner, <clears throat> excuse me, Kathy, sat down with him and proceeded to have a conversation with him until 2 a.m. The owner of the restaurant, instead of, you know, walking around, doing her job, scheduling more people, calling more people in, decided to sit down with this dude, <clears throat> have a conversation at 2 a.m. While we were all working all night, and the problem is, too, is you can't leave until everybody's out of the restaurant. You have to stay and clean up after you got to sweep, you know, pick the trash out, get more ice and stuff like that the entire time. So we, we were not allowed to leave until they were done having their chat. And there was even a point one of our servers, I think his name was Luke, Went up to Kathy and said, hey, Kathy, we're all getting pretty tired back there to, like, wrap this up. And she replied, like, really snappily to him and told him, like, you know, this is my place. I'll do what I want. And then we just sat in the back the entire time. Luckily for us, the chef uh, made us some pizza uh, free of charge, which was very nice of him. But, yeah, we, we had to sit there until uh, <laughs> 2 a.m. And it was it wasn't like it was, like, you know, oh, the worst thing ever happening to me. But it was kind of annoying. Like, I think if you're running a restaurant where you're employing, you know, High school kids and college kids who are probably have school. Oh, this is a really good room for us. You know what? I will be taking this. And I'm going to flip. I'm not going to take Sharp Straw as... Well, I'm going to. I want to have Satanic Bible on the other guy now. We have actually found ourselves in a decent position for once. Would you look at that? But, no, from what I heard, like, my, I was there with, with three of my high school friends, uh, Parker, Sereni, and, 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 and Busser Luke. And once I left, um, I believe Parker got head Busser, and he went to the military, and then they fired somebody else. And now they only have, like, two Bussers there. Whenever I drive by that place when I, before I moved out, it was always, like, a help wanted sign out there. Because everybody knows the stories. Nobody wants to work there. And that, that makes sense. You know, if you're going to run a business shittily, and everybody knows about it, be prepared to face the consequences of it. Uh, the consequences of your actions. But no, I, I mean, I, it, it was good food. It was just overpriced. And once you work... Oh, great. Oh, actually, not that bad. Once you work in a place, it's really hard to go back there and, like, enjoy eating there. Because, I mean, they, were, they, they would make you food before... Like, every restaurant makes you food before your shift, usually. Like, we would... Ooh. That's a boss item this floor, I believe. Um, We can pop that in here. I, I mean, I don't want to carry it. We already have good items as it is. So we can do that. I'll uh, pick up this as this character from more tier 8, I guess. And we'll just grab these and move on. The, we don't got a min-max right now. We're, we're in a good place on the run. 
Uh, but there, it's always a help wanted sign, and it's, you know, they just don't know what they're doing there. And, like, most restaurants... I'm great at this game, by the way. We'll make you food before your shift. It's kind of a common courtesy from your chefs just to make you, like, a quick meal. Just, like, a big pizza or some pasta. Just stuff like that. It's standard stuff. And we got some really nice pizza, like, every day we would work. And we're getting free food. I mean, I can't really complain about that. But, um, no, I don't know. I just, I wouldn't recommend the restaurant biz. Somebody who's trying to get a job in high school. Like, my cousin recently asked me, you know, I'm going to be, I want to get a job soon. Like, when I'm, like, turn 14, where should I work? And the first thing I said is, you know, I, I wouldn't go uh, into the restaurant business. I wouldn't, like, go to a, be a busser or, like, a server because you're not going to be paid fairly. Because, plus, it's the whole, like, tips argument, too, is you make below minimum wage and all you get paid are is pretty much in tips. And if your tips suck for one night, you're going to have a really shitty payday. Uh, it's just, it's just, it, it's, it's messed up. We need to start, like, I would rather be making, I mean, there, you can get some good nights in tips as well. But I, I kind of want the consistency more than I want anything else when I'm working at a place. Like, YouTube is kind of the same way, though, where it's like, th this is like, I'm basically making tips. Like, at Urban, it was just tips, right? It's kind of like, hey, did my video do well today? It's kind of, I, I, it's very inconsistent. But I'm also, like, you know, making enough. I, I know my borderline, right? With a restaurant, you know, there were nights where I would make a, a lot. In t I would make, like, 100 bucks in tips. Or I'd make, like, 10 bucks in tips. It just mattered how many people were working that night and how generous the guests were feeling. And I don't want to rely on other people just giving out money for free to, <laughs> to, to pay me for, for my quality of life. You're joking, dude. You're actually fucking with me. Oh, cursed eye. I love you so. But, I mean, there, there's definitely warrant. Oh, don't walk into that. Is there a battery? There's got to be a battery in our shop, right? I do not want... Oh, but we need two batteries. Well, no, we have one more charge to a fully charged on flip. Uh, I will be buying this, though, right now. And that is like, ooh, and it gives us a full charge as well. Not too bad. Not too bad. I'll pop that right now. Why not? Um, it, it, and I've worked in a quite a few places since that place. I mean, I went from, I mean, everyone mows lawns when they're a kid. They mow lawns or do yard work for their parents and grandparents. Then it was that, that, you know, uh, Italian place. Then it was, um, I was a daycare sitter for a bit. I stopped doing that and started working at the factory for about three years. You guys, you guys already know about the factory. I talk about that like every single episode. But after the factory, I went back to the daycare sitting job for a couple months and then, uh, YouTube and streaming just kind of showed up and, and worked out. Watch this, by the way. Oh, how did that not go into his mouth? Dude, I, that was, like, perfect. I'm dodging really well today, though. Okay, that didn't do... That was a little too early. I'll admit. That, that, was, that was my own fault. How did that... That didn't break when you hit it the first time? It's a, it's a piece of ice, dog. You slammed that pretty hard there. I don't know what the logic is there. Okay. Nothing. Right, we should be good this time around just to fire it on him. Please just die, dude. Oh, we're finally going to beat Big Horn. There we go. We actually got an angel deal this floor and void. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that was the wrong button. There's Godhead. Everybody knows everybody loves it. There's Godhead for you. Okay, well, I'm going to buy void. I'm going to void this up. Uh, yeah, dude, all right. We have, a uh, Cursed Eye Godhead now. And Holy Grail on the other person for full health and flight. Couldn't have said it better myself, I guess. There we go. I'm, I'm pretty, the run's doing pretty well right now, honestly. I can banter some more, thank God. Uh, but after, you know, the, the daycare job was also pretty fun. I didn't make, like, any money doing that, by the way. That, that was mostly volunteer work, I would say. Uh, well, it, it was the first time. Or the second time I went back there, I was getting paid. Uh, because I was I was a school teacher there. I was teaching kids uh, how to, you know, on their Zoom class and stuff like that. So, like, I was essentially doing the parent's job and the teacher's job at the same time all day. So I, I should have been making more, but again, I, the person I worked for was my old daycare sitter when I was like, you know, one years old. So I have a lot of love for her and I wanted to help her out because, you know, she, she was like my, my, my mom growing up almost because she was just like, I, I, you know, I had my parents obviously, but I was there like maybe like I was at home like half the day there the other half of the day. Like it was a 50, 50 split with her. So I know her really well. And I'm, I'm, I just wanted to give her some, you know, just help her out with the kids because it's, it's hard, especially being like, she's like, I think in her fifties. So she doesn't know how the hell to work zoom and how to, how the hell to work Chromebooks and stuff. So it's, it's, it's kind of like a common courtesy to be like, you know what? I'll come in. I'll teach you and the kids, the ropes and how to actually use this shit. I am so goddamn slow. You're faster than I am. I, how do I, how do, how is this fair? How is this fair? 
But um, yeah, I ended up like I was there for like three months, just uh, taking care of of the babies there and 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 teaching kids how to properly work Zoom, and I actually had a decent time with it. I really, really enjoyed it, and that's what I've said it before on this. Okay, great. On the streak too is that if I ever stop doing YouTube, which will probably happen in like four to five years, maybe. Um, I do want to end up being like a teacher or a daycare sitter, just just because I I don't know. I find passion in that. Like I I, I work well with kids, and kids seem to like me when I teach them stuff. So it it is gratifying, you know. It's it's nice to kind of ooh, 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 this you're not flipping. This you want to take Fruitcake as the guy with Play-Doh because it's more fun that way. Plus, Play-Doh plus Ludo is actually kind of garbage. I think, or maybe it's Fruitcake plus Ludo is kind of garbage. You want to go back there and flip it back to what it was before. So, switch off once and then go all the way back. Because I love Ludo and I love Fruitcake. Two of my, like, well, I don't love Fruitcake. But two of my favorite items are, like, Ludovico and any other funny tier effect. So, this is kind of like all, I'm playing so bad. This is all of that in one. I need more speed. I need just generally more everything. Godhead is nice. We only have it half the time, though, so it's not going to be super influential to us. Now we can walk back. Ooh, but you do want to have Godhead Ludo, though. So never mind. You're going to do one more room here. You want to have Godhead Ludo. It's it's continuous aura tears. That's, and also it cancels out Cursed Eye, believe it or not. That's pretty nice. We also can fly and get the Golden Bomb and all this over here. So Fruitcake is last two. Ludo to cancel out everything else. Beautiful stuff, dude. So pick this up. Flip. And there's Ludovico Godhead. Oh, you know, things just work out sometimes. Lucky. That really didn't. That was a lockdown pill, but forgive me on that one. I have a, I have a thing in my throat. Excuse me for that right now, but... No, I do want to end up working with kids, and I and I wouldn't mind starting my own daycare even because that's how that's a lady that I you know I went to did it. She ran it out of her house inside of her uh her, her like house basement. She had like you, you know the, a big TV down there, Nintendo, Wii, a bunch of like baby toys, and it it was a self governed land. I mean, I learned more about leadership than anywhere else, and that's not even a joke. Like because it was just like she was the only one running the place. It was literally just like. Me and all the other kids down there. And I probably learned more about leadership by just being, like, a, one of the oldest kids down there and, like, helping, you know, lead the younger kids than anything else. Why did I gain damage there? Oh, adrenaline. Right. That makes more sense. Okay, let's go find our boss and hopefully get a devil deal here because we have a lot of containers to give away. Dude, the Godhead aura on Ludo is so good. All I got to do is just stand here. I mean, it's just, it's just textbook at this point. This runs over. It's not amazing, but it, it does so much goddamn damage to everything around. It's AoE. It's AoE, and it's extra on top of that damage to your main target. This this is a great synergy. It's also great for clickbaiting on YouTube, so that's the other thing there. But no, I, I learned a lot there about just, like, you know, how to interact with people and, like, you know, how to lead and how to just be, like, a, act like a mature adult because you kind of have to. We might want to take that. And this is a very unique situation. We saw Azazel's horn again. Soul of Isaac. We do have BFF, so why not? We do have BFF. I would have loved to have bad PhD, but I guess it wasn't in the cards for us. Was there a battery? Because I would like to have Maw the Void. It's not that good without... With Ludo, though, is the issue. There is a battery. We should grab the battery. What, what were we doing with our life? What were we freaking doing? Um. Yeah. I I might just buy Maw of the Void as Laz 2. I think it's worth it, personally. I think it's fine. There's really only one other way we can get back uh, into our deal. I'm gonna buy it. Fuck it. We 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 can use the DPS. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's uh, BFF or not for Maw the Void. I completely doubt it, but worth a shot. We'll go to our. We could sacrifice and that could bring us back, but we can't flip until we're in the room to get. Oh, the items are gone. It's, the items are gone anyways. Move on with your life. But so far this run is looking like a free win. I mean, we have a 10 damage sharp straw right now. We have um, Maw the Void. Fruitcake for extra tier effects, BFF, Demon Baby, and and so far, a really helpful rune bag for us. So you know what, man? I'm liking this right now. 
Yeah, the, the whole discussion of this started with the whole restaurant thing. Like, would, would you tell the waiter that, you know, your food is messed up? And I still stand by I wouldn't. You know, I, I, as someone who used to bust and used to, I guess, technically be a waiter, it wouldn't matter how am I so good. It... Ooh, that's berserk. Yeah. Dude, imagine Berserk. Okay, we got to come back as, as, with, with a flip break now. Hold on. I want to do the Ludovico Brimstone. It's the Mets, baby. It's always been the Mets Berserk. Hold on. So you pick this up. You flip. Oh, we're going to have a run, boys and girls. We're going to have a freaking run. And we can go back and we can pick up... No, but Void doesn't have the Bible in it anymore. Because it's character dependent. So we're going to Black Room. And we, we gain stuff. So Berserk with... um. <laughs> with with Ludo, you can baseball bat your tears around the room at like insane speeds. We are now we are now uh the Mets baby. It's always been the Mets. I'm very excited for this. But I even as if I when I was a buster or like slash waiter, I didn't really mind when someone would say, "Hey, my food is wrong." Because at that point, I know it's not my fault. It's just you know the kitchen messed it up. But it, mistakes happen. So what? But I also noticed that it did cause a lot of like you know conflict and stress when you got told you know twice two to three you know i think i would say three times max a night that your food yeah we get the baseball time boys that your food is 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 you know um uh is messed up and it, it does cause stress between workers and, and environmental stuff and i understand that and to avoid that in, in somebody else's kitchen, I probably would just leave it be and eat my food. Now, if my order is completely, entirely messed up, where it's like, you know, I'm a vegan and it, and it has meat in it, then I would be like, hey, I can't eat this. Just give me something else. Whether it be like an appetizer, whatever is cheapest. Ooh, that's almost conjoined for our BFF guy. So hold on. Go back there in one room. Go back there in one room. Uh... So, you know, it, it just depends on what the situation is. If, if it's like, you know, it's the wrong meal, but I still wouldn't mind eating it. I, I'll just, I'll just eat it. If it's the entirely wrong thing and I don't like the food, I'll be like, hey, this, this is not what I ordered. Check the receipt or whatever. And it's all started, by the way, uh, because I went to McDonald's today with uh, my girlfriend and a little brother. And my girlfriend's vegetarian. She, she doesn't eat meat. And so she wanted to get like a sausage egg McGriddle. But she didn't want to have the sausage on it. I told the guy, you know, hey, uh, this is for my girlfriend. Leave her alone. No, I was like, hey, sausage, mag egg, McGriddle, whatever it's called, but no sausage. And he was like, all right, no sausage. The receipt also says no sausage. I thought we were cool. And this is, this is even worse than what it just, you know, forgetting to like, take anything off. Because when we get the actual thing, it's no egg and it's double sausage. Now, I don't know, you know. What went wrong on the line there? I don't want to know. We didn't complain because she still ate the bread, which I guess was enough for her. But it is a little frustrating, you know, because every time I go to McDonald's, I feel like my order is just very slightly wrong. But I also know that the workers are getting paid a minimum wage and, you know, they couldn't give two shits. And that's fine, man. You know, more power to you. If you don't give two shit, if you're working a minimum wage job, I do not fault you at all for not caring. But I do kind of wish uh, it did come out right because it is annoying to, you know. Oh, we, we got we got the baseball synergy now? Dude, it's so good. I love this. Dude, it did so much damage as well. Why is my... I can't move my tear. I can't move... Oh, no. It's like doing a weird dance. Wait. I just can't move it down? I, I don't know what's happening with this right now. Uh, that was very strange. Whatever, we're cool now. We get a spirit heart. I will take the Polaroid. And we'll move on. And we, we didn't complain because at the same time as, you know, I don't want to get anybody in trouble at their work. Because that too is like, where I worked, if the order came out wrong, you got, you got bitched at for like half an hour. And it's not, it's not worth it, man. <laughs> like, everybody makes mistakes. You shouldn't yell at your employee for making a mistake, you know, once a night. Because... They're probably under a lot of stress trying to cook food for, you know, up to like 200 folks a night. It, it's stressful. Even the busters who are bringing the food out and trying to like manage, like micromanage every table. Like it, it's rough. So I, I do not at all, in any sense of the word, fault the workers for it. 
I think they're just too heavily punished, and it kind of makes it so I don't ever want to complain. I don't want to get anybody in trouble. It just, it just, that would be kind of like a, a, a really bad feeling for me. So TLDR is just like treat your workers properly, and mistakes happen. Let it go. Even at the factory, like and this, this is not even just right. This is just like every job. It's not not just restaurant jobs, but like employers just have this hard on for yelling at you for every mistake that you make. And, you know, I understand it's frustrating as an employer to hire somebody to do a job and that job doesn't get done properly. I get it. That sucks. Now, I'm sorry that happens to you. But the more that you, like, you know, yell at your workers out and, and fault your workers, the less chance they're going to have of them staying to work for you or even just doing the job right. Because as someone who got, like, bitched at, a lot for when I worked in the factory, because the factory job was like, just, it was a mess, but as someone who used to get bitched at quite frequently about the quality of work back there, uh, as like a high schooler, again, who was just doing everything back there because every place I've worked has been understaffed, it does make the, the employee bitter, and they tend to get lazier with their job, and I'll admit, I got lazy at that factory job. We work in the same place for three years and don't get a raise? Yeah, I'm gonna be a little bit lazy. <laughs> I'm gonna be a, a t why is my tier, oh, it's the homing. It's not berserk, it's the homing making it super hard to move it. Yeah, it's fine, it, it's still, it's still very manageable. But I'll admit, I got hella lazy at that job. And do I regret that? Yeah, a little bit. I do kind of regret sending out orders that were bad because it led to a lot of rework later. But at the same time, you know, it, it was frustrating, you know, to just be told every single time I do anything at that job, like, you know what? Do it over again, or like, this isn't what I asked for, etc., etc., because it was, you know, there's a lot of disconnect there. When you're working at any place that has like a, a front office and like a back laboring, there's going to be a lot of conflict between, um, you know, the workhorses and the business people because usually one gets overworked and the other takes the fault for it. It's not just on, you know, like, I'll, I'll say this just because I'm, I was a laborer does not mean I had an excuse to do my job wrong because I should have been doing it right 100%. And I understand too that when a job gets done, you know, wrongly, the person who gets bitched at first are the office workers by the customer. And they bring that bitching back and bitch at somebody else. And I get that, it's, it's frustrating for everybody. But the answer to that <laughs> is not to make like, oh, it doesn't work, right. Oh, it is damaged, okay, cool. I didn't know it was damaged still, that's very nice of you. Very, very nice of you. And I, but I don't think that bringing the bitching back to us is, is how you get your job done properly again, because everybody's human and everybody gets mad at that kind of stuff. Okay, we got a pair throw? Nah, Bracano. Oh, we found false PhD. I'm gonna take it actually. Might as well flip here. Don't take that pill as the wrong guy, please. Um, oh, I need to do one room for false PhD mom's coin purse here. Hold on. Give me one free clear. One free clear. Thank you. We're going to have a pretty a pretty nice uh, build here, hopefully. Hopefully a lot of damage. Hopefully a lot of black cards overall, though. But I, I just I don't respect an employer whose first reaction to a job getting done bad is to go and bitch at the person to the job. You got to find out what went wrong in the process. I had this great manager. His name was Pete. He was an amazing manager who, when a job went haywire or a job got messed up, it wasn't like, you know, motherfucker, like, you guys are so bad at your job. It was, oh, great, the glitch is back. It was, where in the process did this go wrong, and what can we do to fix it next time? And that kind of mindset, it rubs off. As much as positivity can be really, really annoying, and I agree, it usually is pretty annoying. His way of doing things and attacking a problem made the, the workplace environment a lot more manageable and made our quality of work a lot better. Now, of course, because he was a good manager, they fired him. <laughs> uh, it was a lot of inner conflict between the actual business owner and the managers, so it was more of like a money issue between shareholders, but they fired him, and after they fired him, the company lost a whole lot of money. A whole lot of money, because uh, they didn't know what they were doing. Get there. There we go. Beautiful. They did not know what they were doing, so good on you, uh, my old boss, Walter. Not Walter White, believe it or not. This is me ranting about my freaking workplace, but I think I think it has some, some warrant to it. 
Because every, everybody has, you know, everybody hates their job. I, I, well, except for, you know, me, because I'm better than all of you. But I, I love my job. Like, I love doing this, but it has its downsides. The biggest upside, though, is being self-employed because I can tell myself, hey, you made a mistake. Oh, well, you know, do better next time. I, so that's all. That's it. Oh, the glitch is gone. But it's going to come back in a minute here. Watch this. Please don't come back. It's back. All right, that's what I thought. Like, it, it's nice to be self-employed because if I make a mistake in a video or, like, a stream... I can say, hey, you know what? I tried my best. We'll get them tomorrow. No big deal. Uh, if I had an employer, I would probably be getting a lot of like, oh, why is inscription not doing well? Because it's variety, Mr. Boss Man. Oh, fuck you is what it would be like. Oh, I don't need that right now. Get that out of my face. Is this... Ah, uh, it's womb two. So the AWAS does nothing. Unless it's a crawl space, it's not though. Damn. I don't want to have to wander. I can't even see what's good. There's, there's a wall here? I thought it was a th like a, an L-shaped room. Very odd. But, no, I, I just, I, I think that, uh, like, bosses get a bad rep because they're assholes, you know, uh, about, you know, just being in charge. And out of every boss that I've had, the one that I liked the most, then what got the job done the best was the one who was not accusatory and recognized that, hey, when one thing goes wrong, it's not because it's somebody's fault. It's because there's a problem in the process that made the person do the job wrong. You either got to teach them better or change the process. That's the, that's the perfect mindset as a boss. Problem is, you don't see it too often because people just, uh, I guess, don't like uh, being positive. It's a lot easier to be to get mad than to like, fix an issue. And I, I, I'm guilty of that myself, 100%. Oh, great. Oh, I missed by like a frame there, dude. Are you kidding me? Whatever, who cares? Go fight. Dude, you have no DPS. I just... We have no freaking DPS. This is going to be a rough fight. Or a rough rest of the run as well here. I am nervous for Cathedral. A lot. Okay, that was almost really bad. Lodestone tiers are interesting here. It sucks the bomb in nicely though. Okay, free, free mom's heart kill. Oh, so far, so scary. Let's, let's go up here. Our HP is looking not so great. Giving up the Satan Bible. Why is milk just floating? First, giving up the Satan Bible was not the right play, I don't think. And I think we're going to be finding ourselves in a very rough situation this run, or this floor itself, just because of how our current HP and DPS looks. There is a reverse card there. That could fix a lot of our issues. Look how long it takes to kill one eye with our tier and the Godhead aura sitting right on top of it. Oh, we can fly, you weirdo. Okay, reverse Empress. Actually, okay. Actually, okay. No, okay, back it up. Nice dodge. Wow, okay. Rough, rough buddy. Get out of here. Oh my god. Chariot card's really nice to see it for a safety option right now. Just, just hide. You are safe playing Ludo and playing like a coward. That is a-okay by me. Get a bomb in there. No! No soul heart. Damn. I gotta focus for a minute here. I can't rant with my run as when I, it's in freaking shambles right now, dude. That's a bad PhD pill for the other guy. Leave that on the ground. We can use pills to get black hearts as the other guy. Well, Midas touch, knockout, drops. There's freaking Pultis in here. Could have fooled me, dude. Could have freaking fooled me. Okay, we're safe. Who do I want to fight the, the, the Isaac boss as? Probably Laz 2 with a chariot card. That would be the best option. I don't think Laz 1 has the proper killing power uh, required for a task such as killing a freaking boss. There is a, a, a Tinted Rock. Please don't be Small Rock. Okay, it's a Spirit Heart for my other guy. Perfect. Oh, dude. It is terrifying in here. It is actually genuinely very scary. I do not play a lot of Tainted Laz anymore. I kind of liked how simple previous Tainted Laz was. Go back for your Soul Heart. Even though this character is, like, 100%, like, way fucking better, I do kind of miss the simplicity of, of old Tainted Lads. And it's not that much more complicated. It's just, like, if you leave an item behind on accident, like, with the flip mechanic, you feel like a jackass. So I, I hate that feeling of, like, I just messed up my entire run right there. So I, I kind of like how old Laz is just like, hey, this character itself is bullshit. So if you lose, it's this character, you know. It's not your fault. Now it's like, it is your fault if you lose. Okay, let's, let's be a little carefuler here. There is, like, normally, like, a startup animation to that, right? Like, there's, I can't move my tier.
Modern problems, baby. Modern problems. <laughs> okay, well. That soul heart pretty much did nothing for us. Love. Okay, come on. Like, come on with that. Really? Really? Of course. Of course. Okay. Just, just, just don't get in your head. Just focus a little bit. Just freaking focus. Uh, you should probably get your chariot card. Uh, it's not a BD1P video. If you don't choose every wrong direction that you possibly can on the most, like, challenging floor in the game, right? Ah, uh, you know. You know, wa watch it, dude. Watch it. Okay, okay. Let's let's think this through right here. Well, first things first, drop your chariot card. That's going to your other Lazarus for the boss fight. Uh, and now just start moving on down here. You're gonna get a free soul heart from him for the help me for the uh, this this guy right here. I'm mostly scared for the chest now, honestly. That might be the biggest issue with this run is going to be the chest. Oh, there's Pultis in here. Jesus Christ, I hate Pultis. I I've become a Pulti hater. Uh, on the on the, the cathedral especially, they're like they're nowhere else in the game except the downpour and this floor for some reason I guess. Hey, you got a, you get a chest which gives you a bomb. Bombs are good for combat. Bombs are good for combat. Oh no, I'm not gonna pop berserk. It makes the tier harder to control and I need to be playing like a coward right now. Oh, soul heart for the other guy as well. Okay, things are shaping up for sure. Soul of Eve is better than chariot card for the boss fight here. That is way more consistent damage. And I can still shoot while doing it, and it lasts the entire time as well. <sighs> okay, wrong way. How are you... Okay, he's dead. I was like, how are you living this long? Stop with the teleporting, please. Thank you. Dude, you can't... Oh... <laughs> I'm the Joker, baby. I'm the freaking Joker. Just, just, just stay, just stay calm. Your boss fight shouldn't be much further ahead. You got this. Picture of that cat hang in there from like 2010. That's what I feel like right now. Just stand back and just pop your sharp straw. They're getting closer. Okay, good, good. Thank God there's no Pultis in here. And goodbye. <sighs> Magician? Sure. I guess. Why do I get flight in that room? But, oh, dude. <laughs> but not in the spikes, huh? But I'm already walking over them. Makes sense. Makes perfect sense. Here's your boss fight, though. Oh, man. It'll be a tough one. It'll be a tough one, huh? Let's look for our super secret room real quick as well. See if we can find, like, uh, extra soul hearts or a, a strength card. Anything? Not here. We'll just walk in, then. We'll just walk in. Okay. Just make sure you're popping your sharp straw and using your soul of Eve and just staying with back with Maw the Void. But you can get in, just... Okay, that was dumb, but that's your own fault. That was honestly all on you. Oh, the, the one cycle? Okay, actually, no, no Void. You, you can't make me fight Void. You literally... I'm not doing it. Not on this run. Nope. I'll be a coward? Sure, I'll be a coward. I'm not going to go fight Delirium with uh, 6 damage. Sorry, 6.45 damage. My bad, guys. Ooh, Undefined. Oh, Cricket's head. Okay. Undefined could be pretty huge here. All right, Undefined, bring me the bacon. Yo, fingers crossed. Damn, it was not here. We are farther along in the floor though, so it, it is actually not too bad to be this far away. Any chargers here? Oh, there's one. Okay, half of the dingles are dead. This is the last half of the dings. Come on, come on. You do have a 10, you have 10 damage, Ludovico Godhead now. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Where are you? I hear you. Yeah, you're up here slamming the ground over here. Get over yourself, dude. I'm guessing going up is the right way. I could be wrong, though, obviously. Lover's card. All right. 6.12 damage. Oh, it's right here. I think we win. Ah, you are an asshole. I think we win. We can walk in here and just lay it on him. But I think we have this. You just play close, but still also, like, move around in a circle. Just like this. You'll be fine. Okay, you hit there. That's fine. You can always flip at the end if you want to flip. Put your cards on the ground right now. In case flipping is your last resort, keep some red hearts on the ground for you. 
You should be fine here. Beautiful. He's frozen. He's unfrozen. Make up your goddamn mind. Oh, we did it. Tainted Elias is complete once again. If you enjoyed this run and my commentary, a like and a sub goes a long way for a smaller channel like mine. Uh, aside from that, join my Discord, follow my Twitch. They're all down below in the description. But in the meantime, guys, I've been BD1P. Peace out and goodbye.